right. Vindicated here from iPlayMore.com. Make sure you go to iPlayMore.com, sign up for a video game test of Thunder. So I'm the game designer, producer, and uh, developer for the Thunder Throne Wars game. Takes place right here, Milky Way Galaxy. And uh, if you uh, look down the Korean arm, you see the Stellar Joe Box Nebula, NGC 3603. NASA took a satellite image of it, looks just like this. And I saw that and I said, nah, that's where we have to put our game. So we put a little planet, Planet Nebulus Prime there. And as we zoom into it, you can see how we're laying it out. So uh, I'm going to be looking at Bear Isle today, which is basically our prototype level. It's got a little bit of development on it. And then I'm going to be taking a look at Intrepid. And we're also working on Excalibur and Forever. So those are coming along. Not much to show yet, but it is coming. So and then we're going to try to lay out this whole Zer Island here. This is the metagame. So in our game, uh, you, it's not just winning and losing and then it ends and then it's over. Uh, you're winning and losing and taking or losing territory. So that's kind of what this looks like. So you can see that the scores uh, of the various teams. So, you know, if you wanted to come, if you were kin and you wanted to take this area back, you'd have to win two games to make it neutral. Neutral looks like Bear Isle here. And you'd have to win three games uh, without the enemy winning to take that territory back. So it's kind of cool to have that meta game up above the game. Our climate system. And the Bear Isle done by the professional map maker. And what it looks like in Unreal. And this map turned out massive. It's actually 16 2 kilometer squares put together. It's just way too big. So we're going to re revamp that. But uh, that was a prototype. And we got a lot of testing done it. If you look here, you can see, if we go all the way back over to here, you can see that the brood are supposed to be at the back end here of the island. And uh, we've actually moved them all the way up here so that this feels right. Because otherwise it would be massively big. So we have a red and blue sun, which is kind of cool. That's going to be going around the planet. And Henrique got a chance to update the scepter image. So I thought I'd throw it in here. So we've got our common scepter, our lightning scepter, our fire scepter, our ice scepter, and our storm scepter. And each one can cast those powers. Of course, the common can do everything, but these ones are specialized. So you get a, like about a 15% boost using these other ones. So if you're doing the free-to-play thing with us, you probably use the common because you want to save a little bit of money. Or you could just go pick one up. They're like five bucks. Decide how you want to play this. The game's better than free-to-play. You don't have to pay anything, but if you want... Uh, well, we'll talk about that in a bit. So this is what our mock-up looks like for our scoreboard. So we've still got a lot of work to do here. So we're just doing some updates to our new award system. So that's coming along. And they're going to be working on the crowns and then the, the score system. And the way our score system works is you get team points. Team is, you see at the top here, that's basically who's winning and losing the game. And so you get team points and you get bonus points. And basically this whole thing is hidden and it comes up as you get team and uh, bonus points. And then at the end of the game, it all feeds into your XP like a machinima. So it's kind of cool. All right, so this is the marketplace mock-up for where you can uh, buy things from other players and sell things to other players. And when we're talking about that, we're talking about real money. Uh, you could use game salary, but you can do it with real money too. As you can see, there's both currencies here. And uh, so this is your wealth storage system. So it's basically all open. You can have your gear over here. All your gear is going to have slots. Same with your devices. Same with your scepters. So uh, all these will open up as your gear levels up in rarity. And uh, so that's pretty cool. That's another reason to own things. So this is the kind of thing that we're doing. We're selling a uh, wholesale package so people can buy a whole set of gear together and then sell it at retail. So it's kind of a very cool concept, totally different than what's happening out there in the marketplace and much better for gamers. So that's really what we're after here. So uh, our development uh, has been, 
I guess normally slow because we were trying to do this big vision. And so we've brought in a, a scrum master. So if you don't know what that means, pretty much every large company banks, uh, manufacturer, everybody's getting into this kind of stuff. And I've been looking at it and I thought, man, you know, software is so complicated. And especially you, you begin to look at things like this. So what this is, is a product backlog. So I was able to draw this up and put it in complete order, following from our roadmap of where we start and then the components that we build on one at a time. So this is gonna be great. So things should be starting to get much more productive, especially getting into next year here. And uh, user stories, so that's step two. And I love this because it's, it's not me saying, oh gee, as a designer, I wanna do this. It's saying, as a gamer, you know, I wanna race to capture my own throne. It's just such a better way to word things. Uh, for the developers to understand what to do. Now the next thing we have to do is called acceptance criteria and Acceptance criteria are a formalized list of requirements that ensure that all user stories are completed and that all scenarios are taken into account. So I'm just starting this so I've got a two pages three pages of notes maybe more four pages of notes and then I got to take all of those user stories and start writing acceptance criteria. So I didn't know that last week. I don't this week. So that's what's next for that. And then just talking about some places that we're going to go once we have our, our vertical slice done and our cinematic ready to go. Going to the indie funds. A little bit more about that. Scrolling down the page. The Epic uh, grant system. So Epic had a grant of $5 million. They spent all that. Actually it took them quite a while to give that money away. Uh, I, I understand they said no to a lot of projects, but a lot of projects, they probably are not going to see their money back out of it. And what I heard is they're really into, you know, backing projects that are going to get them their finance back uh, through the 5% because they take a 5% commission for every sale that we get in the game. So, but anyways, they got a new $100 million mega grant. And so we'll be applying for that as well as soon as we have our vertical slice ready to go. And we're, we're gonna make a, 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 a teaser cinematic from that just because it's a lot easier to share a video than trying to you know, run the game. And of course, that's not gonna be playable. It's gonna be uh, a polished area of the fountain. We'll get in that in a little bit. And of course, there's game publishers. And I wanna go pitch Epic first, not only for the Mega Fund, but also for First Right Refusal to be our publisher. So that's what we want to do there. Then uh, you heard that song in the beginning. I cranked it up full blast. I was actually embarrassed last week. I, I sent somebody to, to who has a studio and he sent me his tracks. And I, I'm like, oh, go listen to my do track. And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's really quiet because I, you know, I'm trying to talk over the music. If I, if I crank the music up, you wouldn't hear my voice because the music is mastered which means that it is full volume for broadcast and uh yeah i guess i could master my voice somehow i'd have to think about how to do that i would have to have uh an interactive plug and not in the music program but just on the voice i do have a noise gate so when i stop talking it gets really quiet which is nice of course you don't notice that with the music but anyway so thunder rocks and that's why, I, I, that's why I spent so much time on that music and that music's so important because that's the very first thing Amazon, Netflix, and HBO are going to hear. Uh, they're going to obviously see the cinematic, but the first thing they're going to hear is that music. So our goal is to get the Vertical Slice teaser cinematic done. And then we're going to write a 12-story uh, arc. So 12-episode story arc. So that's not writing all the stories. That's just writing the, the arc. So what's going to happen in the first season. Then we write the full complete script. I've got an executive TV producer. He's retired. We want to pull him out of retirement. He's eager to go pitch TV again. He's been very successful, very, very successful. And uh, so I hope he's the guy. If not, there's a lot of other ones, but we'll hope that he takes it on. And we want him to go pitch Am in this order, Amazon, Netflix, and then HBO. And uh, see if we can get that pilot done. And think about that. If we get the pilot done, then that's pretty much equal with every other game company does when they put out a, you know, a cinematic. Except that we're going to have these TV networks pay for it instead of us taking it out of the game budget, which gives you, the gamer, a much better game because we're not taking, you know, a third of the game and, and making a cinematic. We're actually using the Unreal Engine 
and this TV uh, concept to make the game even better. And could you imagine watching 12 episodes of this game on Netflix or whatever, and then going to play it in its exact same game world? That's exciting, because that's just, you know, you watch these cinematics, and then you go play the game, and it's like, two completely different things. What are you doing? So, yeah, this is going to be all one thing. So this is, everybody comes to me and says, hey, you know, go do some crowdfunding. And my thing to them is we have a very small mailing list. We can't expect a few hundred people to back this whole thing. So I want to build my mailing list up to about 50,000 people. So we've hired a community manager. He is reworking our I Play More website. And he's going to be working on our social media. And uh, doing exactly that, building the mailing list. And then maybe we can think about doing a Kickstarter. We might not need to, but it uh, could be fun. All right. So I'll make sure that was the next one. It kind of looks like it flashed. And uh, so looking at the 2018 global games market. So we're going to look at 2018 because it's the full first or last full year. And so looking at mobile, $70 billion. But I mean, the, you got to remember the, the competition there is very high. Massive year to year growth. Okay. So then we've got the PC marketplace, 32 billion. So our target market, because we're adding both of those together, because we're going to have an app, you're going to be able to watch people stream our game. Uh, we're going to give out Game Gear codes. You're going to be able to redeem those in an application for the PC game. Uh, the application is going to go to a game designer, and there's going to be some sort of gameplay. We're not going to try to be, uh, you know, put the put the um, the PC game in the mobile because that's you know, people were doing Fortnite did that, but the, they kind of, I think they kind of planned on that. Uh, simpler graphics, uh, you know, but who knows where phones are going to be by the time we release this game. So I don't know. I'm open. But anyways, we're targeting uh, 1.3, sorry, 103.2 billion dollar US market, and which is 75 right here. This is 75 percent of the market. That's it. Really exciting. And we're looking at 2019, which isn't finished yet. This is a little bit dated. Uh, as we come into the end of the year, but look at the year-to-year -year growth on the PC, four percent. So that's up, and mobile's down. So it's amazing because if people say PC gaming is dead, they are so wrong. They couldn't be more wrong. So it's a uh, it's a booming marketplace, and that's exactly what we want to make. And of course, I'm a PC gamer guy, so you know, uh, BioWare's is do it, you know. And I'm talking about the original BioWare, not the one EA bought. All right, so Zorin did some things up for us. So uh, basically, so, so let me just say this. So when I jump into Bear Isle and playing that, it's going to be laggy because we've got everything in there with full textures and all kinds of stuff. And Zorin has created all these systems. They're procedural, which means they use programming, not arts. They use, I think they use one. So instead of using five uh, pieces of art on every object, they're using one. Everything else is code and very performant and so that is fantastic so here is aluminum and gold and so these are not textures there's a little tiny texture that he uses leather but all of this is chromatic which means that you can zoom into this you can just zoom in zoom in zoom in zoom in and it's just like real life you know how you can take a piece of leather and you can look at it from a distance you know it's leather but as you come closer to it you see all of these little crinkles and stuff uh you know it's just amazing and he's done a new cloth one so note to zorin i need the new cloth one and stained metal emulsion so and these are just the basic ones now we can take this and build it into everything else and ricky's been working with the system a little bit so we'll know a little bit more in the next few weeks but what this is, what's why this is revolutionary is because this is what makes the game perform. We've got a very fast-paced game in an open world, uh, open levels. You know, we're not doing this narrow hallway thing like so other many people do with the limitation on movement. Uh, we give you complete freedom. People don't realize how much freedom there is in a game engine, and we offer that full freedom. And then we have the enemy take your freedom away. So that that was. That was a struggle. We could have just gave in and did it the same way everybody else did. And I refused to do that. And so, you know, the game's called Thunder. And I thought, well, how can we use lightning to slow people down? Well, that's it. You got a scepter in your left hand. So that's the RPG element of our game. There's a few of them, but that's one of them. 
And so here is our plan for Azure Island. We're starting obviously with Intrepid and we want to make this vertical slice. And uh, so I'm saying 4.22.3 for terrain and textures. Uh, we're still waiting for multiplayer on AWS. I'm not even sure if that update's happened or not. I'm going to follow up on that. But uh, it looks like uh, I'm being told that we need 4.23 now to blend models and terrain textures together. There's a new technology for doing that. And also our lighting director is saying, oh, we got to update because, you know, real-time ray tracing is just so much better. It's like, oh boy. So we might do another update. We'll see. So uh, Intrepid Pit. So actually dressed with pit objects. I'm going to show that today. And <laughs> it looks amazing. So thanks to Ryan, R-I-O-N, for getting that done. Uh, produce this uh, cinematic version of the vertical slice. So the whole idea is that uh, if I'm going to get a guy on a plane, he's going to fly to some place and he's going to pitch this. Uh, you know, I want the game running to be the backup plan and him to push play on a cinematic to be, you know, the easy plan. So we'll give him both, but uh, that way we're not going to be wasting a trip. And then we blocked out the Kin Castle already. We blocked out the Brood Fortress already. We're going to have to build those, but that's going to be later. And that's where the multiplayer game is going to come in and build out and test the multiplayer game. I guess I just said that. And art direction over the block out. So that's uh, in production and environmental development of the rest of Intrepid. So we're just going to develop that little area right around here, right around the fountain. So it seems to take forever, but every week we get a little bit more done a little bit closer so here's the whole look at the intrepid base map so that's our main focus right now and this is what i want to do for the vertical slice so i've already written the story master voiceover and we're bringing in some writers we're going to edit that zach drops and uh he's going to come down 12 bats are going to fly away there's going to be a hummingbird that flies up to him you can see the marmoset so these are just the the the, the npcs that we've got done and rigged and in animation right now that we can pull into this. Now, I really like, uh, so then the Phoenix is up in the sky, but I really like what uh, what uh, Toby Don did in writing the croc. So I had the croc here. She's put the croc here, closer to three, and it comes up and then you think it's gonna get the marmosets, but they, you know, they pick things out of its teeth. So I like that idea. The other thing is it, it resolves the re reason why the Phoenix don't come down and attack the Marmosets because the Croc is there. So we'll still have the Komodo come and charge Zach. Suyel will drop in. Uh, she's going to try to explain to Zach because she's new here uh, that uh, there's something going on. And that's that, you know, the characters are starting to lose their memory and what's going on. And then they're get, Zach's not going to listen because he's already too far gone. They're going to have an epic battle. We'll, we get into more of that story in the novel, but this is just our little scratch the surface of it. And so that's what the fountain looks like. That's a concept image of, you know, with the, with the stumps and the, the deadness and the stuff growing in the water, the ancient trees, the ancient building. And uh, so we try to mix this up because the castle and the fortress are going to look pretty new and the fountain's going to look old. So there's all story around this kind of stuff and a reason for it. So another image so you can see where we're getting the ideas for the water coming down, the water pooling and things like that. It's always impossible to do it exactly that way, but it uh, kind of looks like that. And then this is what Joe, the art director, did to kind of bring that to life and, you know, blend the land bridge in and things like that. And then this is the brood side with everything dead. The river, the dry riverbed, because everything's blocked off. And then the water's going to just all run down. So we've got a lot of water work done. There's this dam, which we don't have yet. The intrepid Kin Castle mood board. So just ideas, things that we like and shapes that we like. See what we can pull out of, you know, this inspiration and then build. So we're still a long ways away from that, but it's nice to see. This is a concept art for the Kin Castle. Kind of giving an idea of, you know, the size of the player and the size of the building, which is massive. Now this has been changed. So this is a, uh, Norton did this up, one of his first pieces for us. And I just love this idea of having this dam uh, in there. So you can actually be able to see that. 
in the game today in Intrepid. And all the music you're hearing here, this is all music composed for the game. And this will be streamed into the game. That's the plan. And so the whole idea is that everybody hears the same song at the same time. Uh, of course, if you're out wandering, you're going to get a little bit different music than if you're in the arena. This is the arena music you're hearing. So the high energy music to back, you know, the high energy gameplay. So this kind of just talks a little bit about things. So we, we want to put the Marmoset village, the main village, outside of the gameplay area. And the reason for that is you don't want to be getting a quest and then being shot by somebody. So we haven't really dealt with all that stuff yet, but we're starting to deal with the design of it anyways. And then this is the village walk. So basically how the village is laid out. Originally it was beside the ocean, I believe on the beach. And so now it is on its own island. And so that's what I laid out. Of course, everything was really big. And then we put the mar the marmoset in there. They're, they're a pygmy marmoset. So not just even a marmoset, they're a pygmy marmoset that can sit on your shoulder. So we had to reduce the size of everything, so everything's really small, island's really big. So I got all this water work in. Now remember, there's no textures here. Of course, there's no textures here, obviously. But these are just uh, placeholders, just to give us kind of an idea. So that's why everything looks a little bit blurry. Uh, we'll get to texturing that once we have the terrain texture system in place. And like I said, to match these two together, we might have to go to 4.23 is what I'm being told. So that is... Kind of a thing. So the whole idea was to have a little bit of a walkway. So to go over to this one, you, you can walk underneath the waterfalls. I'll show that today. It's kind of cool. And then just some looks at this. And we've done a lot of work since these screenshots. But uh, oh yeah, so here's the here is the dam uh, throne pit in front. So taking Norn's idea. So oh yeah, I wanted to mention today too that this one back here. So we're gonna need we're gonna need spouts. So this thing has to be bigger, or it's gotta have spouts in it or something, and it needs to have one because this one looks like it comes from nowhere. These ones seem to be all right, but you know they're not really coming from anywhere. So it'd be nice to have that all figured out. So these are just the blockouts for the kind of how we want to have the Kin Castle and the Brood Fortress. So looking up in the sky, and this is just one square. And then so we're building the next one over here and then the other one to the other side here. That's how you do these things one piece at a time. Brood Fortress. Sneaky way up from the beach to the King Castle. So that was right here. So this is the area that we're developing just around the fountain. And of course, whatever's going to be in those shots. So as the camera is shooting various directions, we got to make sure that everything, uh, you know, like I was saying that this gate and this tower, uh, we're going to have to use Zorin's texture system and just texture these placeholders so they don't look like they're untextured like they do right now. And then I did a, a river out to the ocean here. And then uh, Just Call Me David said, hey, this is lower than the ocean. So your river's going up here. I'm like, what? Are you sure? And he was right. So he's changed all that. So we'll look at that today. And there's the step waterfall. That was Wade's design. So I wanted to keep that in there. And then the Brood Fortress mood boards. So lots of ideas for lava and walkways. So you can already see some of this inspiration and just the placeholders, but we'll do a much better job when we make the real fortress and real castle. And then the concept art for the brood fortress to make it look like it's a sleeping dragon. And the intrepid summary dock. So every map has a summary dock like this. So for those people who are developing it, it's a very uh, detailed way to go in and look at everything. Oh, you see, he's got notes too. And he actually has some notes in there. And then, I was talking with Jeff. And then Jeff did this up for the Brood Fortress to give us an idea of what, what it's going to look like and how it's going to be multi-tiered. You're going to have to work your way up to the top or you can come through the roof, but the roof is going to be able to close. And then we'll have the energy icon on top. So it's always exposed, but the throne will be able to be enclosed inside the building, which is kind of cool. Part of the advanced gameplay we're moving towards. And then just kind of a layout here of where the mudflats are going to go, uh, the Blasted Valley, 
There's a pit entrance here. I think there's a pit entrance somewhere over here. The geyser walk where the Marmoset Island is, which actually exists now. And this is before we had all the rivers in. And the geyser walk, what that's going to look like. Marmoset ruined the village. What Nikita did for that. The lighting director, so he's got to have a lighting on it, of course. And the Marmoset North Village, the north side of the lake. And then Nikita did up the canoes for that. And uh, that's probably overboard for a marmoset canoe, but he's he's uh, reduced the poly count on these. So this has gone. Now this is what I, this is a question I have: is this went to the rigger, and it's supposed to go to animation? It's supposed to be in the map, and what happened? I'm not sure. So uh, I'll have to figure that out. So what the forest tree looks like, what the brood kind of dead trees look like, what blasted valley looks like, and then the geyser walk. With this lovely green pools everywhere. It's very interesting. Blasted Valley. A couple different uh, images for that. Jeff still hasn't cleared up what, why they're different, but uh, we'll just leave it for that. Jeff did this as well for Intrepid. And uh, and then this is my... I just took a top-down image before we had anything in there. Kind of drew it out how I saw it. You know, with a, a pit here, a lava pit, and you can walk over or fall in or whatever. That's the thrill of, of the getting to the castle and the fortress is that you might fall off the walkway. All right, so this is uh, to see that what the pit looks like underneath. So what we want to do with the pits is we want to give people a very obvious image. And what we're trying to do is concept it. So, you know, this is the land of the marmosets. So why not have a marmoset pit? So that's what we've done. And uh, it's a, r a real place. We want to be able to show people this image and say, well, that's where you're being banished to. So, you know, uh, understand, you know, what you're in and, and how you're going to get out. And so the first time in these things, it's going to be kind of like a Half-Life game where you've got to figure things out. And the twist here is you're with the enemy. So do you work together to get out or are they still your enemy? So there's a, a big thought about that uh, when you're here. So it's, you can do whatever you want, of course. And just some of the puzzles. So this is the banana puzzle. And don't ask me how these work. I don't know yet. I'll know once I get banished. And then another puzzle. Um, I guess that puzzle doesn't have a name. And then another puzzle. Color puzzle. I think this is... Oh, maybe this is a fourth puzzle? Or is it the same one? Same area. Hmm. I'm not sure. Derek will have to fill me in on that. And uh, what the heights look like. So, you know, so the, the kin obviously is a higher end of the map. The brood is lower. So that's kind of the whole thing lays at an angle. And then this is another puzzle with... Uh, it's a maze, but it has these open and closing doorways. I just realized this one really goes nowhere. Unless you're in here, then it goes somewhere. But if you're going in there... But hold on. There's this... Oh, although we don't know. We can't see what's over here. So we'll just pretend that this one actually goes somewhere. But you could do this with a teammate, but you could also do this with an enemy, which is very a very cool twist, I think, on a game. So here is the description for the Intrepid Pit. And uh, so that's another document that Derek has done. This is about four weeks old now. Um, I was hoping that Boyan was going to give me... He has the latest version of Intrepid. He's done this incredible um, version of the fountain. This is supposed to be a tower. I think the wizard's tower. Oh, yeah. So here's the fountain, but this is just a placeholder. So he's done the real thing, which is, you know, he's got a mountain here with cracked earth. And, oh, it's just absolutely amazing. So hoping to show that today, but I didn't get a copy of it yet. So... Not sure where he's at with that. And so we do have some products online. So we got our t-shirts and our poster. Just go to teespring.com slash store slash iPlaymore. Enter the code iPlaymore and save $3. And you can go to our Discord and you can earn mana by being active on our Discord. And uh, that's that. And then 
make sure you go to iPlayWorker.com and sign up for our video game test. And see, I've got my little note here, wave hello, because that means I gotta hit my camera and wave hello. So, because it's funny, because I've gone through uh, full streams without turning on my camera. So here we are, we are in the Bear Isle map. I think, what happened there? My mouse must have went off. And David says, hi, Robert. Teespring is now linked on our website. Thank you, David. That's awesome. That's great news. All right. So here is our sleeping dragon. And uh, we can come and visit him. Oh, I'm doing the wrong thing. Alt P. I'm doing the wrong thing. Alt P. There we go. Third time is the charm. That's what they say. I have microphones in front of my face, so that's my excuse. It's hard to see my keyboard. All right, so this map is slow, slow to load. We've got way too much going on here. We got everything in here, all of our tests. I put them all in here because I wanted to run around and show them. I guess, you know, that's something I could do. I haven't done that in a long time. Talk about some of the NPC quests because the new map is starting to be quite playable. Unfortunately, Kang uh, ended up with an infection and uh, went to the hospital uh, in Malaysia. So I, I honestly don't know what that is like. Okay, so let's let's do something different today. Let's go have a, let's go have a a look at. And I'm just pushing my spacebar. You have a really incredible jump. If I hold Shift, then I can fast run, and you can run over anything. Of course, these paths are a little bit easier. And they have some goodies for you to pick up. But... Got some bird audio in here, but we don't have the birds in. That's a shrine there. Shrines in our game will be—you'll be able to level them up to stage two, which means they grow, and then stage three, which means that you can actually lock the shrine. So that's a brood shrine there. So I could change that to my shrine by hanging. I can't today because we don't have the code. Just by hanging out in there and then if I built it to stage three I could actually start placing thrones from here and attack the enemy from here so the, the game is very unique in many ways kind of like war I mean war isn't just hey this country is gonna fight this country I mean it's all about secrecy and you know I don't even know where am I going okay let's go that's not a recoil device but this is can we just do a recoil device? This one's a little faster. All right. So what we have going on here. So how do you tell a story in a first-person shooter? Well, how about when the sun goes down, the NPCs gather around the bonfire? And that's our novel. That's a novel. That's a draft novel that I wrote. So. We've got a team of writers now that we're, that's one of the projects is to rewrite that novel. Not the first one though, so we'll get to it. But you know what? I got to say that that novel is driving the development of this game more than the game design document, which is very exciting to me as, you know, the guy that created this project. So, and so that's how the story is going to be told. Um, yeah, let's go show the pit. Henrique did all this stuff up, and we put it all here. This is why this map is so slow, because it's way too big, and we've got everything in here, and it's just running poorly. Actually, it runs fine on single player. As soon as I put in the multiplayer code, and I'm not attached to a server, so that could be part of it, and then I'm running two characters on one computer. So. But these are going to be quest areas. This is kind of the idea. We were just kind of flushing some of that idea out. This is where you're going to learn about banishing enemies to the pit. So as you can see there, uh, that's saying that there's 9 out of 16 brood in the pit and 7 out of 15 kin in the pit. And so the kin would not be on the on your HUD, but the brood would be on the enemy's HUD because there's more than 50%. That's how it works. So your objective to win the game is to, is to destroy the enemy's icon. But... Uh, 
if you get more than 50% guys in the pit. Oh, I went right by it. And here is the very first quest. Now, this might not be here in this location, but this is my idea. And there's going to be an NPC here. We haven't got that far yet. Down here on this rock will be an NPC, and you'll come talk to him. The little quest sound saying, hey, you found the special quest. And there is your first quest that we're going to do. So you can skip it and not pick this up, but we're going to give this out as a gift to players. And that is the claw. And that's your base device. Even if you're banished, you still have your claw. And I have one. If I push one, fast way to get it. I have a claw. And check this thing out. So if I, if I left click, I'm just going to push G so you can see my character. You can see he's got a little shield there. So if anybody shoots me and hits the shield, well, it doesn't hurt. So, and if I push G again and I hit my right mouse, I'm in a complete bubble for a limited period of time. So up on the volcano there, you're going to learn about elemental throne powers. Now, these are all subject to change, of course, but I haven't showed this in a long time, so I might as well. And this is where you're going to learn about thrones. All right, let's just... Okay, that's a, a very slow way to move. I like the hog. So you're seeing that different areas load. This is massive. So this is why I like our gameplay, because you can have a massive map and move very quickly. Of course, you have to have it performant, so this is not performant yet. All right, so this is the idea for learning about Sked. What is Sked? Well, Sked is... I have to wait for it to go all the way around. Sked is... Stronghold. Kingdom. Empire. And... Dynasty. So you... In our game, we make you royal, you, you get crowns, all kinds of stuff, and if you're the top guy, well, then you're the prince. Uh, if you're the top guy over the over both teams, well, then you could be the king or the emperor. And, of course, we have the female roles as well, princess, queen, and empress as well. So here's where you're going to learn about that kind of stuff, role-playing by rank. We've only got one crown in the game, and there it is. All right. Yeah, it's been a long time since I've done this. But this map is just way too big, so we're going to take it down. I don't know how that's going to affect the quests. That's where you're going to learn. i got to think about this. About placing thrones? I think that's right. It's been a long time since I did this. And then this is this is kind of one of my favorites. I, I want to have the, the, the lagger princess in this one. So you come up here, it looks like there's nothing here. You go behind the rock, and she'll be here. And this is not with, so you're gonna learn about using not with and being invisible. And of course, that is how you get into... Uh, oh yeah, that's the other thing I need to do, is we need to figure out... I guess we're not really there yet. But yeah, we gotta put the force field system into the new map, so... Alright. So let's have a look here. So this... Hearing the ocean. So this is what a stage one kin, sorry, brood shrine looks like, and you can see what the letter looks like when it's locked. And this is what the stage two looks like. And it's still you can still get in and unlock it. And then stage three is going to be even bigger. So there's a stage two kin. Stage will be even bigger, and it will be locked. Yeah, this is our game. How you doing, man? Made by us. Yeah, in fact, what you're looking at here was made by just three of us. And we've got a team. I think, we, I think we've got... I think we've got... Well, we'll just say 40 people now. So you're not looking at what they've done. 
so yeah so this is made on the unreal engine so we're gonna redo all this but this is just the uh, this is the prototype this is where we figured everything out so okay well let's actually do some gameplay now there's all kinds of those places to go discover uh, and quests to get and what I'm thinking about for the quests is you'll help the NPC achieve some goal and then they'll teach you one thing about the game or give you a gift or something like that so and the pet rolling down the path it was just a design idea at one time I'm just walking because if I run there's no way I can pick these up And they're all coming. Oh, yeah, I gotta put Pep into the new game. Well, I guess not until we have the paths. So you can see this plant is producing it. The Pep plants. And now I am crazy fast. Oh, I'm gonna fall. But I push enter and I can fly. And I'm just gonna come take my own throne. If you jump on the center, it's a little bit faster. And of course, it's a team play game, so you know there'd be a whole team working on this, not just one guy on one computer. All right, so we're on the enemy side right now, and that's exactly how the game is. First guy in, first guy to control. You can come in and control the entire map yourself, and people join late. Uh, they gotta struggle because. What do you have to do in the game? Well, I think I'm kind of showing that now. So basically, you capture your own throne. And if I push H, you'll see that it says SCED there, which stands for Stronghold. Wait till the sound goes. Which stands for Stronghold Kingdom Empire Dynasty. And you can see we're just at the throne stage, so very early. You can see if I push H again, the middle bottom of the HUD, you see that the fountain is lit up with green, which means that it's open for me. So I'm just gonna run, take this guy, I'm gonna run over to the fountain. Now, if I didn't get enough throne strikes, let's push H. I do have four, so I have enough. But let's say I only had one. I can come here to the shrine and collect one or more, of course. And the other thing is, is if you're filled with shrine, if, sorry, if you're filled with throne energy, somebody banishes you, you explode, and you freeze them. So there's always this risk. So basically, on your right hand, it's like a first-person shooter with these devices. This is like a rocket launcher. So, oh, whoops. So there's our rocket jump. I had to make sure I pushed the right button. So now, the next thing that you're going to do is take that energy... So, what does that mean? Okay, well, let's... We have to do some camera adjustment. We have to remove the heads of our characters for the player view. We just haven't got to that yet. So, um, I'm just going to push Atili and POV and 112. Why did that not... Oh, FOV, that's why. Sorry. Atili, FOV, 112. There we go. So you can see, because I leveled up my device, it's got 1332 energy in it. So this is where the game begins to tilt, because if you make the game perfectly balanced, then what happens is uh, it's boring. And you can't you can't make the... It's like a teeter-totter. you got to make the, the, the players unbalance it. So this is my first step at unbalancing the game. I've created a stronghold. I have more energy than the enemy. They have less. It's a small thing, but I'll tell you that you're in a battle and you run out of energy. It becomes a big thing. So, yeah, this map is laggy because we have way too much happening in here. I'll have to buy a new computer just to play this, but we're going to just rebuild this properly. We did a lot wrong. But there's only three guys, so who can blame us? Okay, so, whoa. Kind of overjumped that a little bit. Oh, because I had some pep, that's why. All right, so this guy's on the throne. So what am I going to do to get him off? Well, I'm going to flip to my claw, and I'm going to right-click. And I'm going to just push him off. I'm going to take his throne. 
So the gameplay is called Throne Wars. It's kind of like Capture the Flag, but with th thrones and you're not grabbing something you're capturing. So where did the enemy go? Well, he's down here in the pit. The throne pit, that is. That's why we put that there. There's the walkway. You can fall off of that. So let him capture that. I'm going to go have a look down here. See if we can find this. You see that? It says find. You can also see Sked is a kingdom. Red. So he's the king of dominations. And see, now the locks are on the shrines. And that doesn't match. So I can't unlock it. It's a little hard to play the game with just one guy. <laughs> it's a multiplayer game. So, but you know what's funny is when we did our first game, uh, it was multiplayer out of the gate. And I just assumed when we went to Unreal, because Unreal, you know, tournament is a multiplayer game. I just thought it was going to be multiplayer, but boy, was I wrong. This, this engine is complicated. You, you really need a whole technical team to make a game on this engine. So, so you can see here is the force field and I can just kind of stick my head in and see that there's no lock there. So I don't have to go in. But let's say that I did have to go in. So I'm gonna come over here. And I'm gonna see, oh, there's some power-ups over here. There's the one I need right here. Okay, so all I'm gonna do, if I want some more power-ups, I'm gonna push G. And when you push G, your character is going to do a gesture. We don't have the animation in yet. So it's gonna push G a few times. And look up at the sky, you can see him falling. See that? That's five times damage. And you can pick up multiple of these. They all have timers. And this isn't like Quake where, you know, you get quad damage. They go quad damage. And they announce it. And everybody goes and hides for 40 seconds until your quad runs out. And then they all come back out. So this is very different. So... Your over button, I'm just pushing the over arrow, allows me to select the different ones. So if I want to get in this force field, I just select not with. I push enter. Not with. And then I enter. Not with. And I can exit. So I walk it out. And then it always goes back to your freedom. So you can just push enter to fly. So just some things as a game designer a gamer, that's the kind of thing I'd like to have, so I can just push enter and fly when I want. So let's just see if we can find one to unlock. Nope, this is different. So I'm going to turn off my freedom. You think that freedom would be the fastest, but it's not as fast as the recoil on the devices. Alright, so that isn't the key. I'm hoping we can just find one. Now this is random, so it's different all the time. And it's an underdog thing, which means that that I could go face that enemy, but if he's big and powerful, and I don't want to face him, uh, my team can run around to the shrines and unlock it. That is a bear. And I can't seem to find it. So that could mean that it's in the pit. It could be back here too. Oh. All right. No, it's in the pit. Okay, well, I'm not going to worry about showing that. Kind of got stuck in that force field a little bit. All right. So let's just show some more of the of the gameplay here, some basic stuff. And then we'll jump in the next map because we can show it all here. The, the great thing about this map is it's set up properly. So there's, you know, the kin, the, 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 throne is actually in the castle which in the new test map we don't have that yet so i can come here um yeah you know what let's do this so i can push t gives me this menu here and i've got w a s d and so if i want a, a lightning throne and i want one way high up in the air i can look up in the air and look what i did Let's just push enter so you can see. So you can see I went straight up in the air. You can see there's a line connecting it. 
And the goal, so so there's two victory conditions in our game. One is to banish the enemies. I'm going to show that in the next map because I want to show the new pit. And so I'm not going to go too much further today. I'm just going to place a couple thrones here so I can place whatever kind of throne I want. Henrique! Welcome, man. You know what I did? I, I went around and showed all of your uh, quest items. Not all of them, but a bunch of them. So that's what you missed. Okay, so... So if I push H again, you can see that Brood has a kingdom. So that's the K in Sked. And if he comes back here... Now he's got a choice. He can touch his... He can touch his own home throne. But of course, my enemy would be placing thrones out here. Henrik, he's got mana. I'm glad that's still working. I was tricked into paying that guy. Okay, so you see, I could touch that throne and make a empire. The other thing that I could do is touch a forward throne that my team has placed, or I can just simply place a forward throne and achieve an empire. Oh, there's that bug. See, the crown's not on it. That bug is bugging me now. <laughs> it's supposed to have a crown right away. So Henrique did that crown. So um, Another thing I failed to show, too, is, is if you... Hold control. That's not right. If you hold... It's control, isn't it? I thought it was control. The zoom isn't working. Okay. It was before. Don't teach me for not testing things. Things are slowly getting broken on this map. Anyways, so you can place thrones, and you can see that if I push H, you see now that I've got an empire. If, it held, if I could hold that for eight minutes, I would have a dynasty. So I'm going to leave this map. Oh, I, let's go look at the... I said I was going to look at the dragon. So let's go look at the dragon. I always forget, I always say I'm going to do things and then I forget. Then I watch the video back and I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot to do that. So I'm actually entering, you can see here. So there's the walkway. There's the throne. And so down in this throne pit is an entrance to the pit. And so I can come in here fully geared. Can push shift and run fast. And here's my sleeping dragon. And Henrique's egg. Uh, we want to put some bones into that and animate it a little bit. Um, in the novel, um, there is a baby dragon. Uh, her name is Jacqueline, or Baby Jack, we call her. And... I want her to be born. I want the players to actually hatch her somehow. So I've got some ideas about that, so that's later on. So here's our sleeping dragon. Oh, let's let's show a secret. So if you shoot that strange looking rock, it disappears. And look at this. What is that? The Oculus. So we've got these rare devices. Now the cool thing about the rare devices is they attack your core shield. Uh, every shot takes a lot of energy, so you shouldn't just be wasting it. Save it for an enemy. But you can attack somebody's core shield, and they're thinking, "Oh, hey, you know, I'm I'm doing great." And players grab the egg and hatch it. That's basically the idea. And if you log out. The dragons are going to take it back. Shh, don't tell anybody. All right, so that's a recoil device. It's got the wrong kind of recoil on it, but we've got a lot of work to do on devices. So anyways, there's a secret. we got the full moon rising there. Of course, this map is all done. Uh, there, there's We just have a grass texture. We don't have grass in here, because if we added grass, this probably wouldn't even run on my computer. But that's my fault. That's because we had a team of three people working on this. And we just kind of pushed everything to the limit, put everything in here that we could imagine for the prototype. Okay, so let's hit escape on purpose for once. Uh, F11. 
<laughs> F11. Exit out of that. Don't save. Okay. And then while I'm doing this, you can all go to iPointWord.com and sign up for a game test. We actually have quite a few people signing up. It's great. And thank you. I really appreciate that. And it's just, I know that's the first trickle. We're still a long ways from even people being able to download this and test it. I've been saying forever, oh yeah, just a couple more weeks, but man. No, that's uh, David. David LaRose, our project manager. All right, so, and I load this one second because it's a little bit fast. We still have a few things. All right, so let's hide our toolbar that we used to work with. Go game view in immersive view. All right, so I want to say a few things. Oh, you know what I meant to show in the other map. Oh, I'm so sorry. We don't need to put quite this much stuff. I understand what you're doing. This is this is just call me David, another David on the team. You're, you're hiding the seam, which is fine. I, I got to show it in the other map. <laughs> he's my neighbor. He's my tenant, too. Yeah. It's a cool story because... We had a project manager, so I took everything that he said in chat. I made an ad for Seth Godin uh, for his linchpin. I put the video up thinking that they wanted the video. They said, can you put a video up? I said, yes, and they didn't ask me for it. And I thought, well, I made a video for no reason, and it was up. David saw the video, called me up, wanted the job, and so <laughs> we got a project manager. So we don't need to have so many rocks here. And you can also see how, here, you see it looks kind of unrealistic. Now, another thing I wanted to mention too, I was in Unreal, one of their maps. I, I'm gonna shoot a little video on that next time I see it. They put a wet uh, texture. So like we could put a wet texture and it's like water flowing down. It doesn't look like this. It just makes it look like this is wet. And so those are things, but this is very early stage, so. But David did a, just call me David, sorry, did a fantastic job. This lake has now been raised, right? So here is my off flow. So this goes out to the ocean now. Sure glad I got my speed good. So there we go. I can't figure out how to, Henry, can you figure out how to change the color of the ocean? It's just too, it's too blue. I mean, it looks nice, but it's just too blue. So there's something for you to think about. Um, oh, the other thing I wanted to say to just call me David is that this idea is not good because that's a level uh, stage one shrine that's going to go to. Oh, so here's the other thing, too. You see the circle is all hidden in the ground. So we got to flatten that area around that. So um, we need a much bigger space because that's going to go to stage two, which I showed earlier in this video. And then stage three, which is freaking, you know, I don't know, massive. So we need a massive place for that. So the other thing that Just Call Me David did is he split this river, which I think looks really nice. That's very cool. So that's cool. So, you know, I would just put a rock right here. You can see it's doing some weird things. We're gonna buy it. I'm gonna buy a new set of river tools uh, once we get to that stage, so. You can see also here, you talk about river going uphill. That's go that's uphill. You see how that's going up? So that's got to be fixed. I was going to come in and fix some of this stuff today. I am getting so backlogged as we get busier and closer to this thing coming and the team's growing. And, you know, we're still hiring, trying to find all the right people. So I was noticing something, something here. Oh, yeah, you see how this is running fast? It's because there's a node right here. And then it's bulking up, so that's got to be fixed. There was something else here. Oh, and all the stuff that I put in the rivers that make it dark and slows you down, that physics, uh, that's got to be put everywhere. So, anyways, okay, so let's let's play. So I'm gonna do the gameplay here. And and, and for, first of all, before I do that, I just want to say understand that I'm going to be playing in this little tiny area here because that's what we're testing. It's just much easier for us to test back and forth because i got to go back and forth than for me to run all the way to the castle and then all the way to the fortress and then back again. 
And those are all that gameplay came from uh, our early pro prototype between the years 2005 to 2007. I had a team of 34 people, and we were making a very early version of this. And that's kind of the concept I came up with is people need a reason to go from one side to the other and not just shoot each other. Of course, in our game, you can just shoot each other. But the benefit of the game is getting those elemental throne powers. And I'll show you some of that right now. So let's just go Alt-P. And you can see it's going to be so much faster. Oh, there's nothing in here. It's not a real texture. There's a few, but not very many. And we just have a micro Suiel on both sides. I put some devices here. It's a pick up. So and there's not much code done this week because Kang's been in the hospital. In fact, he he was online last night. He went, wow, good to see you online. He's like, I'm still in the hospital, but I got my laptop. I'm like, okay, get well, buddy. So all the best to you, man. We miss you. That's a problem with having so many people on the team. Uh, there's a lot of, somebody's having some crisis at all times. So. All right, so I'm going to join the brood on the other side. Princess of Thunder. So I, that's a bug. I instantly captured that. See, the kin captured first. There's some little bug there. But anyways, let's take a look at, at my water work here. Now, again, there's no textures on the land. There is textures on the water. Excuse my head. We're looking. You can see inside my head sometimes. That will all be fixed. But I've got the audio in here. So we're going to have to put some mist. So that's what I'm trying to say to Just Call Me David is that we don't have to do all that rock work. I do like this rock work, though. But this is where the wooden gate goes. I guess we could just put the wooden one over here, but the concepts show it there. So, we, you know, we need a blocker on both of these. This is dr the dry riverbed. So there we go. All right. So how do I get her off the throne? Oops. Oh, my goodness. So yeah, see the cameras and the arms and stuff, but just ignore all that. That will all be fixed. So you can see that the throne is flashing. <laughs> Looking down inside her pants. But these are these are not characters we're gonna use. The characters we're gonna use are not functioning quite yet. In progress. <laughs> Dominations. <laughs> See how small she is. <laughs> oh, okay. So we had a modeler come in. He, he did the models for us. And we couldn't figure out what was going on, but it, it just, you know, he was just helping us out. So. Hey, Suyo. Oh. Uh, where is the device? Okay, I cannot see her device. Okay, let's just switch over. But she's showing... She's here. She's showing it on her own self. And she can't see it on her. Okay, well, that, that's a minor problem because these are not the characters we're going to use. So this is just placeholders. Um, okay, well, let's... I got to think about who I am. Okay, so let's go create a stronghold. You can do this in any order. So again, you can see my device is leveled up to 1332. If we go to the other character, you're going to see that she is capped at 888. So it's as much energy as she has. And that's not 888 shots, because if I take a shot, you can see it uses some energy. Now, we're going to allow players later on, not right away, to adjust that. You know, that's not even... I shouldn't even say that, because that's not even in the first game, so...
Oh, okay, you're talking about changing the color. Yeah, the changing the color of the rivers is easy. I, I already did that. So I just kind of matched. So Wade said that we should be kind of yellowish green. So that's what I tried to do with all of that stuff, kind of make a yellowish green or whatever. But f I can't figure out the ocean, so yeah, have a look at it. So anyways, she's unable to level up. She can level up her inner... No, sorry, I'm wrong. Oh, there's no, there's no physics in, in the fountain. But that fountain's not going to be the... The real fountain is here. So that fountain will move to here. So maybe David in a few weeks we can do that. Put the fountain here. And that's actually going to go to the pit, but we don't have a pit. Well, we do have some of it. Okay. I'm going to quit fooling. Kind of wasting a lot of time today. So, um, before I do anything, let's, let's go look at a couple of shrines and just see if I can find this lock. Just to show what that's like. So I can see that this one doesn't have one. Nope. Oh, but you know what's going to happen? We've got Dynasty at two minutes here. So it's going to go to a Dynasty and change all the locks on me. Okay, so maybe this is a bad idea. Captain's going to go back. Oh, so you land in the lake, but you use the recoil device, and you don't. Okay, so... So that is supposed to be out. I'm just going to place some thrones here really quickly. Switch the other side. It's a lot easier and faster to show things here. Oh! I didn't have an empire yet. That's why the enemy's not out yet. Yeah, see, it's out now. Okay. I thought we had that fixed. Okay, so Ultimate Throne Wars. Ultimate. So all that means is that the thrones have met. I'm going to push Enter. So I can fly. You can see what's going on here. You see they're kind of close. Oh, yeah. So it's really slow to fly. And then when he push enters like super fast. So that's not quite right. So I can shoot her. And when I actually hit her, there's this weird thing where it's not quite where you are. I've got thrown to attack. Alright. So because I have a few more points than her, so you can see my line comes up here. This is supposed to have a crown on it. I'm not sure what's going on there. Because I have an empire, right? Uh-oh. That's just warning me that my freedom is about to expire. Okay. Okay, I know what I'm going to do. There's the crown. So that was weird. The, the crown is supposed to go anywhere where I touch. Okay, let's just bring the enemy down here. So that's what Throne Wars is about, placing those thrones and, you know, getting yourself all the way over the enemy. I'm going to show that, but first I'm going to show Banishing, but first I just want to see what's happening. Who's got the H? 100% shields. There's the dynasty. All right. We're at the new song again already, so that means it's a longer stream than normal. Okay, so we're going to banish her. So so if I push F, I can shoot fire. No, I can't. Another strange little thing. It seems to be that way. All right, let's just, let's just use red. Oh, yeah. I've got more devices over here, too. We gotta fix that too. I pushed space twice and went really super high. It's just too much. I think the programmer has that all set up so that I can adjust it, but. Alright, where did she go? 
There she is. All right. So that little bug, the new devices aren't showing up. So I can fill her up with stingers. And she gets a countdown. Now that would be impossible to do in the game because they'd be running around. But even if I put one on the ground, oh, whoops. <laughs> even if I put some on the ground, so that means my energy's low. Okay, she's going to be gone for a little while, so... Let's go show... If I push G a few times here... It won't quite be that spammy in the game, but that's what it is right now. You see the power-ups are dropping? So now if I push Enter... Let's go to that device that was empty. It's filling up a little faster. Silly Alice theme song! Now, if you want to hear that song full volume, I played it full volume at the very opening of my stream, so... Where's my power up? So, yeah. Well, I don't need that one. Okay, well, anyways, that will fill up your shields, your devices. She should be back. She she would have landed. Remember I put those stingers on the ground? So she would have landed on those. So you can sting your throne. Like, say, for example, I want to control this throne. Oops. You see, I can mine it. Okay, where is Suya? Oh, she's still coming back down. So she must have went. She must have. Oh, I don't know. I had her really full, so she must have went really high. These are all things that we're gonna work with and adjust. Here's my water system. So that's all gonna have mist, and the mountain will have textures, and then we'll put rocks and shrubs and trees and all that kind of stuff. So. So it's saying I have a lightning attack. I do have a lightning attack. Okay, cool. So let's push H. You can see she's only, only got 16% red shield. I know what I need to do. I need to get a uh, notability, five times damage. Anyway, so. <laughs> so I, I did left click to put the, the Oh, I used up all that repo. Oh, there she's back. Alright. Oh, see now I'm on her rare shield. So I'm just gonna switch to my other red device. So these are missing from the HUD. It's all stuff that probably would have been done this week, except he was sick, so. So you can see I'm shooting, now you're seeing a rare shield, so I'm shooting her rare shield. I can't help myself. So that's a non-recoil device that's not pushing me around. This is a recoil device, so when I, I shoot it's pulling me, pushing me. And then the counter for that, I guess the best thing to do is to go pick up some freedom. I just put these here just so I would have them. Alright, so now I'm going to be able to fly. I got to find her again. There she is. So if I push, so I'm using push if I go backwards. Yeah, see our aim is off too. So these are all things that I said to the programmer last week. So. Do 
right. So you push the opposite. So I'm being pulled towards her. Except the hit isn't there. There we go. Okay, forget that. Too many multiple bugs. So when I get rid of all her shield, let's go have a look at her. She's got 17% left. So the cool thing about her game... At some point here, she's going to have zero, 10%. So I think I can do three shots. So she's got zero. So this is the thing. Now, most games, when you have zero shield, you're dead. Or health, I guess. In our, our shield in our game, health in another game. And we don't do that. That's a huge surprise to you. In our game, we just make the shields flash to warn you. We don't have that all set up yet. And you're still in the game. I could retreat. I could go to a shrine. I could go pick up shield or whatever. But if she shoots me one more time... Then you're banished. And all this is left... Everything that she had is left behind is booty. Except for shields for some strange reason. Let me know about that. <laughs> She's not supposed to have to jump to all these. <laughs> you just pick them up. Okay, so what does it look like for the enemy that's banished? So you've been banished. You can look around. WASD doesn't look, will work. You can see the enemy. You can see them picking up your stuff, which is kind of a bummer. But you can also push the left mouse. And you've been banished to the pit. So this is Ryan's work to make the pits. So he did the mushrooms. So we just got a very small portion of the pit. I actually haven't spent a lot of time looking at all this stuff yet. So I saw all that. And you, of course, have your base device. And if there's an enemy in here and they're shooting you, you've got that shield. And then you've got this shield. Yeah, see how small the character's? Her wings should be sticking out of that. Okay. That's the first time I've seen that, actually. All right. So she can come back in here, you can see. Now she's kin, and you can see there's a kin lock on that. So this is pretty cool. Oh yeah, and the block text, that's a shield thing, so we gotta get that fixed. But I can push return and be back in the game. And so that's how banishing works. And Ryan, Ryan did a great job on that pit, that looks great. All right, so let's show what it looks like to win the game. We don't have the banishing all the enemy players yet. So these these thrones have turned red again, so that's another bug. This is supposed to be my throne. Let's see if we can get rid of that block text just by picking up a few more things here. There we go. It's amazing how many bugs came over here. So now you can see that I have put... And I've got no device. Oh, I've just got the two devices I picked up. You can see now that I've put her energy icon into Jeopardy. It's got a, a bar over top of it. I can strike it with lightning, which does some damage. I can shoot it with devices. Of course, your whole team would be doing this with you. Of course, it would have a little bit of a longer bar or whatever. More energy on the bar or more health on the bar. <laughs> yeah, you see the shot is off the target. So the programmer will fix that. So should have been fixed for this week, but so what's gonna happen? Now, 
Now that at the top isn't truly team score, but I did move the thrones over to each side. I just thought that looked a little better. But here's what's revolutionary about this is now the game starts all over again. So this is actually supposed to be at the top. See, it looks like it's, yeah, it's stretched out. So this is 10, uh, 1080p image. So that's not quite correct. I think that was adjusted by, um, just call me David. So maybe I have to have a revisit of that. But anyways, I can just push Ken. I can pick whatever character I want. Of course, we just have the placeholder characters. The game restarts, no reloading. That is revolutionary. I love that idea. I hate the fact that the arena ends and then they load to a menu. And then you sit in a menu and then you vote and then they load the next arena. I mean, oh my goodness, I've got a life to live. I don't want to sit around while you load stuff. So this game, there will be an initial load, but it's open world, it's streamed level. So if I went over top of those mountains, not today, because over top of those mountains is nothing. But uh, once the next map is in, I'll go over top of those mountains. It's going to load the next map uh, in the background, not load as in the load screen. It's going to just stream it into the background. So, you know, Unreal is doing some incredible things. I, I call this a $100 million game engine. I don't know exactly how much it costs, but that's basically what uh, Amazon paid for the Lumberyard engine. It's a Crytek engine. So I'm just assuming that this would be close, if not more. So 100 million, I think, is a good estimation. I don't have 100 million dollars to make a game engine, or the time, or the patience, or the knowledge. So it's nice to have this. Anyway, so that's basically the game. Um, oh yeah. So if you push enter and you have no power-ups, you get the chipmunk laugh. If I pick up freedom, push enter, now I can fly. And there's no limitations. All those games out there that, you know, give you a lane to go into, a route to travel. We don't have any of that. This is absolute freedom. So I'm just going to fly out to this little island here. Push enter. I'm going to land. And if I come over to this first hut, you can see the Marmosets, Pygmy Marmoset, and he's going to be on my shoulder. So, of course, I'm going to be bigger. He's going to be the same size. And there we go. So that's that. You just use your claw to fly if you want. It's nice you have the little shield to somebody shoot you. That will reflect the shots if they hit it. And, of course, if, it, if that isn't big enough, you can use... The full body one. Oh, I gotta make sure I have the right device. The full body one. Of course, for her, it's like a. You can, you can fit five cereals in there. Anyways. <laughs> so there we go. Oh, I know what I wanted to do. Is that the shrine there. We'll go up to the sneaky way up into here. So Devin did a fantastic job laying out this map. Oh, I've got a couple bumps to deal with. There's one here I just saw. Yeah, right there. And there's one here. I thought I got all those. Oh, I know what I wanted to do yet. So I wanted to show off my... Now this was... This was Norn's idea. And he had a whole bunch of little ones, and I was too lazy to put a bunch of little ones in. I mean, we could still do that, I guess. So I put big ones, and then if you go behind the waterfall. And I push enter so I can fly. This will be a hidden area, so we'll put some, some uh, energy there and stuff like that. This is kind of cool. And this is all going to be defensive area. As enemies come in, of course, they can come in from anywhere in our game. And so then you're going to want to have some place thrones. You're going to be able to use your elemental throne power. So that's on your left arm to slow them down. And then the devices on your right arm. And you've got a forward recoil and a rear recoil. So I'm doing a rear recoil. So even though I'm pushing forward, I push backward. 
I'll actually move backward. If I push forward, I'll change my momentum and head forward. And then we've got shrines in very specific locations. If I push H, you'll see that it's filling up my shields. And that rare shield there, that core shield, 12, 14, 16%. Uh, that's one way that you can get it, is by coming to the shrines. And if you hang out in the shrines, of course not today, they will go from stage one to stage two to stage three, which is kind of cool. So. Anyways, yeah, and I'm sorry, I, I meant to, in my first map, show it. You know what, let's just... I don't know why I'm doing so much today, but... Let's go crazy. Open level. Just to show you that we do have another map that we're working on. So these are not textures. This is actually... Um, this is the, the layout that you're seeing on the land. So it's, it's a low resolution texture. Anyways, I just wanted to show a little bit. So here is the brood. They are actually going to be inside this volcano here. Your fortress. And then the kin will be up over here. The fountain will be there, but I don't really want to show that. I'll show that next week when Blaine puts that in. And then the kin will be here. So we might have to do some work to make this all fit. I'm thinking that the tree can go here. So this is where you spawn. And that's just not... I guess that's big enough for the throne. I don't know. I'm not sure exactly what... Jeff had planned there and how that's all going to lay out. Maybe the, maybe part of it was over here. I don't know. We'll see. We will see. It's got all his reference numbers and stuff on it. So anyways, that's kind of cool. I did some work here just to make some of the mountains because they were all looking kind of the same. Just to make some a little bigger. And it looks low resolution. That's just because of the texture that's on it. So once we get proper textures on here. And so those are the mountains that go over to Intrepid. So where I just was... This is the other side. This is all going to be one massive big open world. So imagine that you're playing a first person shooter outdoor arena game. That's what this green line is that's showing the boundary. So that won't be there, but you know, players will stay within the boundary. If you leave the boundary, your shields will disappear. We'll just, we'll, they'll just uh, fade off of you and you're allowed to go anywhere you want. You go over those mountains, you'll be into the next arena. So you can literally travel from arena to arena. Outside here will be the NPC quest, so you can go talk to NPCs and do that sort of thing. And inside, you're vulnerable. If there's 16 players on the team, if there's more, than, then you're just a spectator. If there's less, then you just come in and you're, and you're joined into the team that you uh, have a character out for. Or you get the character select menu, or the team select menu, or whatever. So which is all going to be redone. Anyway, so that we've got this map coming along too. This is still really rough. It's a very, very early stage. And not even a placeholder texture. This is just the layout on top of here. Just so we get an idea where everything goes. And we've changed the brood side a little bit just because the boundary is so close. So the boundary now goes out further. We've got some islands out here. So that work still has to be done. But uh, the, the map holder now is Boyan. So we need to get his map. And then Jeff would work on that map. And Wade as well, when Wade gets back to working on the maps. So it's going to be great to see what those guys do. But anyway, so that's going to be it for today. I had meant to show this last week, and I never did. So I guess it's good that I did. And then I was going to wait until um, I had Boyan's. Because, I mean, his fountain is absolutely amazing. It's broken and frozen in time at the center of the game so I and we don't even really understand what the story is so we still have to write the story why that is so anyways make sure you go to ipointmore.com and sign up for a video game test of thunder and that's it for today so like subscribe follow share comment all that good stuff and we'll see you on the flip side it's vindicator and i am